and this girl, this is another one of my girlfriends, she is super strong. Two green, one colorless. Creatures with power, less than champion of lamb holds power, can't block creatures you control. Whenever another creature enters battlefield and you control, she's going to get huge. She's going to get buff. She's going to be in the gym pumping iron, pumping, and just become the Hulk. She-Hulk. That's what I'm calling this uh, card from now on, She-Hulk. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Commander's Crypt. What a beautiful day. We Today we're going to talk about Streets of New Compenda, Commander Precon Deck, Cabaretti Cacophony. The featured commander is Kit Kanto Mayhem Diva. So she's white, green, red, one colorless. When she enters the battlefield, create a 1 1 green and white citizen creature token. At the beginning of combat on each player's turn, you may tap two untapped creatures you control. When you do, target creature that player controls, get plus two, plus two, and gains trample until end of turn, go that creature. So, yeah, we're going to talk about this today. <clears throat> I was looking through this. This this actually looks pretty impressive. It looks very hard to beat. Um, it basically uh, buffs all your guys and makes a bunch of creatures. It's going to have like a swarm mentality to it. So, you know, like I said before, I like to open these up if people can't go out and open them themselves. So, that's what we're going to do. The show must go on. That's our motto here at the Commander's Crypt. Choose your commander and overcome both friend and foe in this definitive multiplayer magic format. Start the show with Kit Kanto. Her siren song will whip your opponents into a frenzy. Kick back and relax while they fight among themselves. Then finish the job when the time is right. Kit Kanto Mayhem Diva. This cabaretti crooner is the best singer in all of Nuka Pena. There's magic in music, and in kits more than most. She can enrapture an entire room, or send them lunging at each other's throats. Whatever the rhythm, Kit is always in control. <laughs> Interesting. So yeah, so we're gonna go check this uh, out and open it up and see what we got. And um, yeah, so before we do that, uh, please like and subscribe. Um, we're a new channel. Uh, you'll see we absolutely love commander. We played a couple of times a uh, week and um, We're looking to not just be our, our motto here at the commander crypt is we're not just looking to be another commander channel But a commander community. We just got a website up uh, It's commanders crypt and uh, Right now it's just got my videos on it, but eventually it will have all kinds of stuff on there merchandise uh, classifieds forum you know uh, where we can discuss things so uh, without uh, further ado we will get into this box opening here I like to keep these boxes so I'm just gonna open this from the bottom here <clears throat> so yeah so that's what you get you get the box and they're doing this thing now with um, you know less waste so so it comes in this box within a box and then you get another box and <clears throat> but then also you get where'd it go there should be a uh, there should be a yeah yeah they always hide it in here okay so They, they're giving these um, collector booster sample packs in here too so um, they've been pretty crappy so I don't know uh, you know what's going on with that but we'll, we'll, we'll see what we get here so you know they're trying to get you to buy the collector booster packs they're like 25 bucks a, a pop so, oh, oh! I'm happy with that because um, I just did a uh, Zia Tora the Incinerator um, deck building session. We're gonna cut that down too. I really like that deck. I played it the other night, 
uh, dragon and demon tribal is uh, my favorites and then it looks like we've got a um, foil botanica botanical plaza I'm gonna have to check to see the price on that incinerator if that was a foil that'd be big money but um, I think that's still a pretty decent pull so I'm pretty happy about that so uh, okay so we'll, we'll get into it here so Kid Canto this looks like a very interesting deck um, to be honest I would just uh, probably get the precon and then put jet mirror uh, you know in it um, or you know so because I really I really like that jet mirror commander and if you if you've got a uh, big token strategy jet mirror is the way to go so all right so let's get into this here we will uh, zoom in here on this stuff and uh, see how we do here so I'm pretty happy about that Zeator I like that very happy about that okay so you know here at the commander's crypt we like to actually use the the uh, cards instead of just doing a green screen so um, you, you see that we have the cards and we're actually getting the product and all that kind of stuff there she is Kit Kanto when she enters the battlefield create a 1-1 green and white creature uh, citizen token at the beginning of combat on each player on each player's turn you may tap two untap creatures you control when you do target creature uh, you, you go it and give them plus two you know that 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 could be all right but again I, I think the jet mirror is the way to go so so she is the featured commander second featured commander is Fabian boss's confidant um, white green red three colorless creature tokens you control have haste parlay at the beginning of combat on your turn each player reveals the top card of their library for each land card reveal this way you create a green and white citizen uh, citizen creature token then creatures you control get plus one plus one till end of turn for each non land card revealed this way then each player draws a card you know I've I've never known how I really felt about that parlay thing a lot of guys like that it helps them but it it, it always seems to help me too especially if I got a Kali of the vast deck or um, you know a Zia Tora deck out there it always seems to help me too I, I still don't know how I feel about that a lot of guys like it though so uh, next we've got rumor gatherer whenever another creature enters the battlefield on a control sky scry one if this is the second time this ability has resolved this turn draw a card instead so with the token creature strategy that's going to allow you to scry and then draw cards they gave white a lot of help with this set and I'm glad for that sizzling soloist one red three colorless alliance when another creature enters the battlefield under your control target creature and opponent controls can't block this turn if this is the second time this ability has resolved this turn that creature attacks during its controller's next combat phase available I think that's pretty good actually if you're gonna be popping out a lot of uh, you know tokens so you know having secondary ways to take advantage of that would be fantastic Another, you know one thing I would definitely put in this deck <clears throat> is one of my favorite cards it's called divine visitation it's two white three colorless and it says whenever a token comes into play create a four four angel with vigilance that that enchantment would definitely have to go into this deck um, just imagine there's all kinds of ways to just create all kinds of 1-1 one, one citizen tokens imagine if they came out as 4-4 four, four angels with vigilance so that's one card that I would definitely put in here and then with sizzling soloist you can uh, 
make it to where the other guy's creatures can't block and, and goad them as well. Cabaretti Charm, Naya. White, green, red, choose one. Cabaretti Charm deals damage equal to the number of creatures you control to target creature or planeswalker. That is very, very, very strong in this deck. I, I see where you could have all kinds of tokens to just overrun people. Next is creatures you control get plus one, plus one again, trample 10 out of turn, okay. Then create two, one, one citizen tokens, okay. It's gonna be interesting to see how this deck performs. Intangible Virtue, one white, one colorless enchantment, creature tokens you control, get plus one, plus one, have Vigilance. Ooh, ooh, I like that. Orzhov Advocist. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player may put two plus one, plus one counters on a creature they control. If a player does, Creatures that player controls can't attack you or planeswalkers you control until your next turn. Again, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, yeah, it's 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 nice to goad them, but then, um, you know, the more you goad them, the bigger they get. Uh, but you're going to have multiple opponents out there, and um, you're not going to be able to goad them all. And uh, eventually, they're going to they're going to start coming at you. So I, I don't know how I feel about that. We'll we'll have to try it out. Path to Exile. Fantastic card. Exile target creatures. Controller may search its library for a basic land card. Put that on the battlefield. Tap and shuffle. Beast Within. Fantastic card. Destroy target permanent. That could be lands. You know, probably a lot of times those Maze of Is are a big problem. They just, they just uh, take out the biggest creature uh, from combat and um, Beast Within and Chaos Warp and uh, the White Gift spell which I'm uh, sure is going to pop up here in a second uh, you know takes care of lands so that's very very good card Cultivate allows you to ramp and mana fix Blue, uh, excuse me, green and two colorless search library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal those cards, put one on the battlefield tap and the other in your hand, then shuffle. Green staple. Harmonize, draw three cards for four mana. Leafkin Druid, add green. If you control four or more creatures, add two green instead. Secure Tribe Elder Stevo. One green, one colorless sack em. Search your library for a basic land card to put that battlefield tapped and shuffle. Steve-O. What else? When they enter the battlefield, search your library for a force card, put that card in the battlefield and shuffle. Boros Charm. You're always gonna use this to uh, make your permanent indestructible. Such a strong card. Choose one. Boros Charm deals four damage to target player or planeswalker. Permits you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Double uh, creature gains double strike until end of turn. You're just going to hold this in your hand and wait till somebody board wipes and then basically win the game because nobody else is going to have any creatures but you will. Arcane Signet. Bloodthirsty Blade. Two colorless. Equip creature gets plus two O oh, and is goaded. Attach Bloodthirsty Blade to target creature and opponent controls. Activate only as a sorcery. See now, now we're talking. This this is much better because uh, it stays on them, so they have to keep attacking. Commander Sphere. Rolling Stone, Boss's Chauffeur, this guy, this guy seems very strong, one white, four colorless, finally starting to get into the rares, the other, the other 
precons had uh, way more rares. Um, Bosses show for enters the battlefield with a number of plus one counters on it equal to one plus the number of other creatures you control. Wow. Alliance, when another creature enters the battlefield under control, put a plus one plus one counter on Boss's Chauffeur. Wow. When Boss's Chauffeur dies, create a 1-1 one, one green citizen creature token for each 1-1 one, one counter on it. Wow. Wow. That guy, that guy could get big and strong fast and then he's the gift that keeps on giving at, even after you kill him. Grand Crescendo. I think this is going to turn out to be one of the best cards in this whole set. I'll have to check the prices on this. Um, again, it's kind of like a Boros Charm, too white. You give all your creatures indestructible. But if you've got like a Smothering Tithe or, or a bunch of treasure tokens, uh, this could make you a bunch of tokens that are then indestructible, which you could block with, and then alpha strike somebody create it's an instant create x one one green white citizen creature tokens creature control gain indestructible to uh, i i cannot wait to play test this card i think it is gonna be bonkers an instant that with x with all the treasure tokens and smothering tithes and all that stuff this this thing's gonna be crazy town Master of Ceremonies. You know, I was looking at the uh, Obscura Operation and the uh, Maestro Massacre precons, and this one just might be just too strong for them because they go relatively tall. But the, this thing is going to be creating you all kinds of tokens. It's going to be interesting to see how many tokens you can create with this thing. It's going to be the 10s and the 20s or more. Master of Ceremonies, here's another one. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent chooses money, friends, or secrets. For each player who chose money, you and that player each create a treasure token. For each player who chose friends, you and that player each create a, a green and white citizen creature token. For each player who chose secrets, you and that player draw a card. Very, very strong guy. Making more dummies. Indulge to excess. Red to colorless sorcery. Whenever creature control attacks this turn, create a 1 1 green and white citizen creature token that's tapped and attacking. Wow. Okay, and then the aftermath is create a treasure token for each creature you control that dealt combat damage to a player this turn. Man. You got a bunch of dudes, and uh, you make more dudes, and then you swing in, and then you make a bunch of treasure tokens off that. That th th this could make a lot of treasure tokens. Very interesting. Life of the party, kind of an annoying card. <laughs> One of the guys at the crypt the other night was playing this card, and uh, it's kind of annoying. Uh, you know, good for you if you're the one who played it. One red, three colorless, first strike, trample haste. Whenever life of the party attacks, it gets X plus so until end of turn where X is the number of creatures you control. So uh, yeah, so this guy's gonna be huge on your side. When life of the party enters the battlefield, if it's not a token, each opponent creates a token that's a copy of it. The tokens are goaded for the rest of the game. So they attack each combat. If able, attack a player other than you if able. See, that's the thing, but they can block with them. So, I, again, I still don't know how to feel about this card. I mean, yeah, it's good for you uh, because you're going to have a bunch, but then, you know, that 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 one defense is, is kind of a problem. Rose Room Treasurer. One red, three colorless ogre warrior alliance. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, create a treasure token if this is the first or second time this ability is rolled this turn. Otherwise, you may pay X. When you do, Rose Room Treasurer deals X damage to any target. So, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, first or second time, make a treasure. 
otherwise you may pay X when you do okay so it is a may so you could just keep building this up and then whenever you play a creature you can uh, fireball somebody with them treasure tokens actually it just says pay X very interesting it doesn't say you have to use those treasure tokens to burn those people as the fireball very interesting that could be a good card can't wait. we're going to have to play test these to find out C is the spotlight this is a very good card this was the card that uh, the professional player Jody Keith was talking about during my interview he just said he just said that you know th this was a crazy card one red two colorless each opponent chooses fame or fortune for each player who chose fame gain control of the creature deck player control till end turn untap those creatures to gain haste till end turn for each player who chose fortune draw a card and create a treasure token yeah, and then you could recur this. The other day somebody played this, and um, I just let him have my creature because, and it was a big creature, it was like an 8-8 flyer, um, because I knew that there was a, another player out there that was way ahead of us and stronger, and I was very sure he was going to go uh, use that creature to smack that guy and not me. So that's one way to play this. So that's a very good card. Crash the party. Instant. One green, five colors. Create a tapped 4-4 four, four green rhino warrior creature token for each tapped creature you control. Again, very strong. Wow. Wow. For an instant. If you got something to tap all your creatures into, like a like a, uh, a, a equipment or something, I mean a vehicle. And then just before your turn, you, you slam this down. Make a bunch of 4-4 four, four rhinos. Wow. Very good card. This 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 deck seems strong. The other the other two, this this seems stronger than the other two, the you know, right out the box. Uh, the uh, Maestro Massacre and the Obscure Operation. This this deck seems stronger. Killer service, green, two colors, when it enters the battlefield. Create a number of food tokens equal to the number of opponents you have. Food tokens are two, sacrifice this artifact, gain three life. At the beginning of your end step, you may pay two and sacrifice a token. If you do, create a 4-4 green rhino warrior creature token. It just says at the beginning of your end step, you may pay two and sacrifice a token. It doesn't say creature token or food token or treasure token. So I'm, I'm, you know, uh, rules lawyers. Let me let me know. I'm I'm taking this to mean that any any token, you could make your one ones into four fours, your treasure and your food tokens. You could make in the rhinos. Scepter of Celebration. One green, two colorless. Equipped creature gets two O and has trample. Whenever creature deals confidential player, create that many one one green and white citizen creature tokens. Wow. Wow. This deck seems to be the strongest to me so far. Vivian Stampede. Two green, four colorless. Each creature you control gains Vigilance, Trample, and Melee until end of turn. Whenever a creature with Melee attacks, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each opponent you attack this combat. At the beginning of the next main phase this turn, draw a card for each player who has dealt combat this turn. Wow. Wow, you're going to have a lot of creatures. And you might sacrifice a couple just to go to a, a few other opponents just to give the bigger melee buffs. Wow. That's that's very interesting. That's a uh, overrun, but maybe better. Best Soul Nourisher. One white, one green, one colorless. So whenever one or more other creatures with base power and toughness one enter the battlefield in control, put a plus one plus one counter on Bess. Whenever Bess attacks, each other creature control with base power and toughness one 
It's XX till end of turn, where X is the number of plus one counters on best. Man, she seems really strong too. That's, uh, you know, it's interesting that they have both of the, uh, you know, the pumper overrun cards together here. Wow. Man, this deck seems strong. Um, Cabaretti Confluence. And, and you know, Rocco Cab Cabaretti uh, Caterer, he is very strong, too, as a commander. I was watching some e uh, co uh, competitive EDH games. I watched somebody play uh, Rocco and then, with the X, bring in Godo. And then <laughs> Godo brought in the Helm of the Host, and the guy just won the game. Um, you know, so this this... This Cabaretti uh, Precon might be the strongest. Uh, you know, you put Jetmere and... Uh, uh, you, you know, uh, 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 Cabaretti Caterer, uh, Rocco definitely definitely would go in there, yes. Um, choose three, Cabaretti Confluence. You may choose the same mode more than once. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. It gains haste. Second, at the beginning of the next end step, exile target artifact or enchantment. Creatures target player controls gets plus one, plus one, and gain first strike until end of turn. Okay, very, very strong. Prosperous partnership. Boros and one, when it enters the battlefield, create two, one, one, green and white citizen creature tokens. Tap three of them, create a treasure token. Ooh, interesting. That's a colon too. So you can keep doing that. That's something you could tap your um, creatures into if you got this out. Tap all your tokens into this, make treasure tokens, and then play that um, Crash the Party where you make all those 4-4 four, four rhinos tapped. Wow, this, this deck seems really strong. False Floor. This deck seems the strongest and the easiest to play right out the box. This might be the one for, for new players. False floor, four colorless. False floor enters the battlefield tapped. Creatures enter the battlefield tapped. Two, exile false floor, exile all untapped. Creatures activate only as a sorcerer. Wow. That's an exile. That's not just destroy, that is exile. So what that's gonna do is make everybody want to keep attacking or their or their creature's going to get exile when it becomes your turn interesting and your 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 creatures are going to be you know you do that after yeah you, yeah yeah you'll do that after your creatures on tap wow call the copper coats one white two colors instant Strive. The spell costs one white colors more to cast for each target beyond the first. Choose any number of target opponents. Create X, one, one, human. Soldier, creature tokens, where X is the number of creatures those opponents control. Holy mackerel. <laughs> wow. Create X, where X is the number. Wow. Wow. So, right off the bat, you're going to target the guy with the most creatures with the one white two colorless then for another two mana so f so five mana you do it to the second one the, the guy with the second most creatures if you have seven do it a third time wow man this this deck seems to be the strongest out of all of them duelist heritage super strong card whenever one or more creatures attack you may have target attacking creature gain double strike to land turn that's, that's every attack. So you could goad somebody's creature and then with this, give it double strike. So they gotta hit somebody else for a lot. Wow. Felidar Retreat, one white, three colorless. Landfall, whenever land enters the battlefield and control, choose one, create a two, two white cat beast creature token. Put a plus one counter on each creature control. Holy shit. These creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. Wow. Man, this deck seems really, really strong. Fell the Mighty. Destroy all creatures with power greater than target creatures' power. It's going to kill all the big creatures and keep your small creatures alive. 
Marshall Coup, two white X, create X, one one white soldier creature tokens. If X is five or more, destroy all other creatures. That is super strong. Man, so that's a that's a board wipe, but that's a one-sided board wipe. And we really love those here at the Commander's Crew. Wow, that's a good card. Agitator Ant. One red, two colors, beginning of your end step. Each player may put two plus one plus one counters on a creature they control. Go to each creature that had counters put on it this way. So you're gonna be able to put counters on your creatures and their creatures, they're gonna be attacking each other. Again, I don't know how I feel about that, but, um, yeah. Kazul, Tyrant of the Cliffs, he's an ogre, warrior. Two red, three colors, whenever a creature an opponent controls attacks, whenever a creature an opponent attacks, so that's every creature. If you're the defending player, create a 3-3 three, three red ogre creature token, unless that creature's controller pays three. So guess what? Nobody's going to be attacking you probably with this guy out. Uh, especially if they just got a couple of creatures. Interesting. Man, this deck is really good. Magus of the Wheel. I would recommend picking up the Maguses. I, I think they're very good. I mean, they're only copies of the best cards ever created in Magic. You know, Magus of the Moat. Um, if you can't afford a moat, and by, and by the way, they're like $1,500. You put Megas of the Moat in, in your deck, and um, you know, not as good, but still very good. Megas of the Wheel. Wheel of Fortune is a $300, $400 card. Um, Megas of the Will, you know, that's uh, Yogmoth's Will. That's a $600 plus dollar card. So, anyway, um, this, uh, you know, these Megas's, they're very, very good. Megas of the Moon, you know, because. Um, uh, that card is uh, about $150 Blood Moon so uh, you know now how well it works in this deck I don't know Magus of the Wheel that's kind of a weird inclusion but um, maybe they should just put a green a card draw spell or, or enchantment in here but anyway that's my rant on the wheels Outpost Siege 1 red 3 colorless as Enters the battlefield, choose cons or dragons. Cons at the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. Until in the turn, you may play that card. Dragons, when a creature control leaves the battlefield, outpost sees, deals one damage to any target. Heck, what I might do with this deck is, um, you know me, I love dragons. I'd put Goro Goro in here from the last set. Um, or uh, Dragon Master Outcast. You know, to make uh, five five dragons. You know, you're going with a, a mega token strategy. Why not? You know, that's just maybe something I would do. You know, because I love dragons. Zerzoth, Chaos Rider, one red, two colors. He's a devil. Legendary creature. Whenever an opponent draws their first card each turn, if it's not their turn, you create a one one red devil creature token with. When this creature dies, it deals one damage to your target. Whenever one or more devils you control attack one or more players, you and those players each draw a card and discard a card at random. Oof, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> okay. Uh, again, I, I, I might go with something. I might go with a Dragon Master Outcast on that guy. Um, or a uh, Sandworm Convergence. Yeah, that'd be good in this deck. Sandworm Convergence, it's uh, two uh, green, six colorless. And what it does is it makes you a 5-5 five, five worm at, at the end. Uh, but then also, um, creatures with flying can't attack you. That's that's a problem this deck's going to have. You're going to have all these, a bunch of token creatures, but you're not going to have a whole lot of flying blockers or whatever. That's why I'd go with the dragon token strategy. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I would do with this deck. And... If you've got them, Parallel Lives or um, Doubling Season. I mean, Doubling Season's like an $80, $90 card now. Parallel Lives is up there too. Thank goodness I got one a few years ago. Uh, basically doubles your tokens that you create. Um, 
you know that might be the thing to do is start looking for cheaper ways to uh, make extra tokens Arista of the Endless Web um, and actually there was a card that came out I can't remember the name of it right now that came out in uh, the last um, oh man forbidden oh, man it, 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 a, a double uh, a token doubling enchantment just came out uh, last set uh, before before Neon Dynasty, the uh, Dungeons and Dragons set, uh, Forgotten Worlds. There it is. Um, look that up. That one that one might still be cheap. Oh, and Vornclex. Uh, well, no, Vornclex is counters, not tokens. We'll have to we'll have to look into that. Uh, we're, we're, what I'm getting at is we're going to have to start looking for alternative methods of uh, doubling tokens because doubling season and um, parallel lives. I, I, I couldn't believe that Parallel Eyes went up so much, but uh, anyway. Arista of the Endless Web, two green, two colorless, reach whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, create a one, two green spider creature token with reach. I like that. I like that in this deck. I like this deck, man. I didn't realize I was going to like it this much. This is my favorite deck out of all of them. One green, two colorless. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice, you may create a 01 colorless. I'll draw this one creature token and have sacrifice this creature add colorless. Wow, I really like this. Just tokens everywhere. Oh, here it is. Beast Master Ascension, one green, two colorless. Whenever a creature control attacks, you may put a quest counter on Beast Master Ascension. As long as Ascension has seven or more quest counters on it, creatures you control get plus five, plus five. Oh, all your one ones are now going to be six sixes. Wow, man, this deck is strong. Woo! And this girl, this is another one of my girlfriends. She is super strong. Two green, one colorless creatures with power less than Champion of Lamb holds power can't block creatures you control. Whenever another creature enters battlefield you control, she's going to get huge. She's going to get buff. So she's going to be in the gym pumping iron, pumping, and just become the Hulk. She-Hulk. That's what I'm calling this uh, card from now on, She-Hulk. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield and you control, put a plus one, plus one counter on She-Hulk. Uh, as a matter of fact, I might I might get a, an altered card of this with the She-Hulk on it. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Anybody who knows me knows I love altered cards. So, oh, There it is, Sandworm Convergence. Very, very good card in this deck. Two green, six colorless. Creature with flying can't attack you or planes walkers you control. At the beginning of your end step, create a 5-5 five, five green worm creature token. This card is an absolute beast. This card is so crazy amazing strong. I, I, couldn't, I can't believe it. You, you, creatures that fly can't attack you. And now every turn you get to make a 5-5 five, five token. This is a Maya Traxa deck. There's been times when I've had this in mode out and nobody can attack me, either on the ground or in the air. This, until you play with this card, you don't realize how effing strong this card is. This is an enchantment, so it's hard to get rid of. Very, very strong. A 5-5 five, five green worm token on top of all that. And green, you know, that, that mana cost for that card is not that crazy with green. Um, I, would, uh, I would maybe start looking for foils of this. In my humble opinion, this is one of the best cards in Commander. I've seen it played with tremendous effect. Scoot Swarm. Man, another good card. One green, two colors, landfall. Whenever land enters battlefield and control, create a one one green insect creature token. If you control six or more lands, create a token that's a copy of Scoot Swarm instead. Yikes. Boy, talk about Swarm. <laughs> wow, this deck is really strong. Shamanic Revelation, two green, three colors, draw a card for each creature you control. Ferocious, you gain four life for each creature you control with power four or greater. Yep, yep. Silver and Offering, one green X, choose an opponent. You and that creature, each cre uh, player, each created X, X green. Tree Folk Creature Token. Choose an opponent. You and that player each create X11 Green Elf Creature Tokens. That reminds me. You know another good 
card that you could potentially put in this deck would be Elish Norn. I mean, you know, imagine Elish Norn giving everybody else's creatures negative two, negative two, and yours plus two, plus two. She's white. That's a, that, that might be something to put in here. Thunderfoot Bailoth, two green, four colors, trample lieutenant. As long as you control your commander, Thunderfoot Bailoth gets plus two, plus two, and other creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and half trample. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I really like this deck a lot. This is my favorite out of all of them. Now, what I may do is, um, you know, what I. Uh, in my humble opinion, what I would do is if I had, uh, you know, enough money to buy a couple of these precons, I would get this one and I would get Obscure Operation because it's got a lot of awesome cards in it. But you know, you, you're going to do whatever your play style is. But um, this deck is really, really strong. Artifact mutation: one green, one red. Destroy target artifact. Can't be regenerated. Create X one one green sapling creature tokens where X is that artifact's mana value. Cool. Assemble a legion. At the beginning of your rookie, put a muster counter on assemble a legion. Then create a 1-1 one, one red and white soldier creature token with haste for each muster counter on assemble a legion. Wow. Man, I really like this deck. Or a mutation. Destroy target enchantment. Create X-1-1 one, one sapling tokens where X is that enchantment's mana value. So you got a, a, a bunch of um, instants that destroy artifacts, but then you get value out of it. Man, this is a really good deck. Uh, you know, um, you know. If you, it, it, another thing I'd recommend is go check out my video, uh, 15 cards to get right now. Aura Shards is a uh, green-white colorless enchantment and whenever a creature comes into play, it's not cast, comes into play, destroy target enchantment artifact. That would really go really well in this deck because you're going to be making all kinds of tokens. You, nobody else, will be able to have a single enchantment or artifact on the battlefield with that card. Go check out that video. Um, yeah, that would work really well in this deck. Camaraderie. One white, one green, four colorless. You gain X life and draw X cards, where X is the number of creatures you control. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Wow. Wow. That's going to be a lot of cards. Kahiji honored one. Naya and two. Whenever a creature attacks one of your opponents or a planeswalker and opponent controls that creature gets plus two until end of turn. Very nice. Very nice. That that goes for you as well. Wow. And your opponents. March of the multitudes. Two white, one green, X, convoke. Your creatures can help cast a spell. Each creature you tap while cast a spell pays for one or more mana. That creature's color. Create X11 one, one white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. Wow. Wow. You could double. <laughs> you double your tokens. Wow. And like with divine visitation, like I was talking about, they all become 4-4 four, four flying. Yeah, so that's, that's what you need for this deck is divine visitation. Aura shards. Yeah. Yeah. Savala, explore, return. There, there she is. White, green, colorless, parlay. Each player reveals a type card of the library for each nonline card this way. Add green mana and you gain one life. Then each player draws a card. You know, I, I always just felt that that helped the opponents too much. But a lot of very good players play that parlay thing. So, you know. It might not just be part, you know, my play style. Sometimes you have to play to your strengths. And that's just not my, you know, I, I've, I'm never, I've never been a real big green player. Um, you know, I, I would play this deck. I, re I really like this deck a lot, actually. 
Idol of Oblivion to colorless draw a card to tap it. Activate only if you create a token this turn. Sack it. Create a 10 10 colorless Eldrazi creature token. Wow. So for two many, you play this. Every time you make a token, once a turn, you can draw a card. And then you make a 10 10 Eldrazi creature token. You gotta sacrifice it. Wow. Man, this deck is really good. Canopy Vista. It's another rare. Castle Arden Veil. Ooh, I like that. Two white, two colors, create a one white human creature token. With Divine Visitation, that's going to be popping out a 4-4 token. Uh, Angel with Vigilance. Castle Emberth. Creature you control, get plus one, plus O till end of turn. Cinder Gale, Exotic Orchard, Fortified Village, Game Trail. Man, this deck is really good. Moss Fire Valley, Help Fix Your Mana, Rugged Prairie. Ooh, man, these were going for a, a pretty penny a while back. Sun Grass Prairie, Temple of Triumph. Wind brisk heights. With this, with this deck, this this is a good card. Uh, hideaway. You get to uh, you know when you you may play the exiled card without paying its mana cost if you attack with three or more creatures this turn. So that allows you to flash stuff in. You know you play this early and then you attack with three tokens. Pay one white and boom, you you get to flash in whatever is hidden underneath it. Oh, there it is. They tricked us. They put the soul ring uh, there toward the end on this one. Ash Barrens, Command Tower, Jungle Shrine, Myriad Landscape, Naya Panorama, Path of Ancestry, Thriving Bluff, Thriving Grove, Thriving Heath, and then we've got the uh, Basic Lands. But I just want to look at the... Uh, the tokens that we get in here. Okay, so there's the there's the thick um, proxy card that they give you now. I like that. I like that they do that. I, I like the big cards better though. And um, these are the tokens that they give you. So Eldrazi spawn. And then a, a hot babe as as your human token. Hey baby. Another Eldrazi. Human soldier token. Cat beast. Devil. Soldier. On the back of devil is a soldier of white red. Ogre. Okay, that's for um, Taval or whatever his name was. Insect token. Beast token. For your beast within. I'm sure there's going to be 4 4. There's the Sapperling token. Tree Folk. Spider token. Yeah, I wanted to look at the tokens because this, this thing makes so many different types of tokens. Elf. Oh, there it is. The, the worm, the sandworm convergent. I, uh, I didn't have any of these. I'd always have to make some, uh, use some kind of snake token or something. Citizen token. Hey, you got a boyfriend? You don't. You want one? Food token. Treasure token. Rhino warrior. There he is. Man, I really like this deck. This uh, this deck gives an A plus for me. I, uh, I I think this is my favorite deck out of the one so far. Um, the the obscure operation is going to give you a bunch of awesome cards, a bunch of awesome value, but I think you're going to win more with this deck. So we're going to get on out of here. I hope you like that uh, Cabaretti Cacophony review. Uh, please like and subscribe. We really like making videos here. Um, I really like Commander, and uh, we've got we've got some really awesome things planned in the future. 
uh, for our channel. So please subscribe. You're going to be glad you did. So we're going to get out on here to uh, look look out for tomorrow for our next um, video that we're going to do on the next Nuka Pena pre-con. We've done three and we've got two more left. So without any further ado, we will get on out of here. You have a very crypty day.